Hello, people of God. We want to welcome you to this week of Behind the Scene. Wow, I am so excited that this is really blessing a lot of people. And thank you for all the ones that have been giving us their feedback, those that have been commenting, and those that have been giving us a thumb up. My God, I'm really excited and excited and excited. But I'm looking forward again for this new week of behind the scene because we have been dealing in the last series the point of how we handle finances and the kingdom finances and etc and today we want to look closely how we overcome financial stress because in the ministry what a lot of people are not prepared for is financial stress people are not aware that when they have a calling that they will need some money to be able to see the manifestation of that call or when they have a vision that they will need a resource is a provision to be able to see their vision manifest and very often this brings people to a financial stress and bring people to a place of financial worry and etc etc and sometimes even affect the fate of the people because they start coming to a place of doubting if really they are call of God, and if really what God says that he will do, he can be able to do it because, you know, sometimes when God called us to do something and we are beginning to be trained, that's the right word, we are beginning to be trained for that assignment, it can even be that in the initial stage of your calling, everything is working against the call. For example, I remember when we were when we were starting the church newly, I think I've shared this briefly in some of our past uh, broadcasts. When we were starting the church briefly, when God told us to go and start the church, guess what? We did not have money for any equipment. And it was not that we were not praying. It was not that we didn't hear the voice of God, but we just didn't have money for equipment. It was so bad that we have to be borrowing if we are calling for a feast or we are calling for a, a, a special uh, a conference. We have to go to other churches to be asking them if they can borrow us their PA system, their equipment, because we don't even have the money to rent. That was how bad it was. And imagine you going to ask churches, other churches, to borrow you their PA system. And sometimes it depends, you know, if they themselves at the same time you need it, they probably might be having also their own conference. So that means that your own conference will not happen or it will not happen in the magnitude that is supposed to happen because the place you are going to borrow a PA system from, they are also using it for their own meetings and etc, etc. So there were so many things that can come our way as, as people that are called into ministry or even in business or even in other professions that because the finances is not coming, we might think it's not God that is sending us in that assignment and that can start worrying us and that, and that can bring us in a place of financial stress. I remember at the early stage of our ministry, you know, very often uh, some of our leaders will be asking me, are you really sure that this is the work of God? Because if it is the work of God, why we did not have money for this? Why we don't have money for this? Why are we lacking here? Why are we lacking there? And every time I talk to God about this thing, God God will just tell me that we are in a training. And that's one of the first things I really want to share here, how to overcome financial stress. The absence of things does not mean that you are not called. The absence of things that you need in the initial setup of your calling or your assignment does not mean that you are not called. You just want to, you just have to know if 
it has to do the absent of those things, if it has to do with the training that you are going through, because if you don't pass the test, how are you going to go to the next level? So if God is going to trust you with much, he want to first see how you manage the little. That's what the whole talent story in the Matthew chapter 5 uh, 25 is all about. The, 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 the story of the talent is all about the ability to be faithful with the little. Because if we are faithful with the little, God can trust us with more. So in my case, it was really a challenge at the very beginning. So I want you to understand that you can overcome financial stress by trusting, number one, on the one that has called you. Always believe that God that has called you is faithful and he will make sure that he provide whatever you need at the right time. And number two, to how to overcome financial stress is don't put your trust on money. Do you hear that? Put your trust on on the supplier of the money. Because when you put your trust on money, it will always not be there or not be enough for you. And that can bring you into a place of worry. And then another thing, number three, for you to overcome financial stress is don't put your trust on people. Do you hear me? Don't put your trust on people when it comes to finances. Because I remember in the early days of our ministry, so many people will come and promise, but they don't fulfill their promises. And so if you put your trust on the people, you will be so disappointed. Whether it's a business, whether it's a, it's a ministry, whatever it is God has called you to do, let your trust not be on the people of God. Because when people come and tell you they will give you this or that, accept what they are saying, but don't put your trust there. Continue to look for many other ways. Like I always say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have multiple channels where you are expecting income to come from so that if one channel fail, you know that the other one is still there. Because very often what brings people to a financial stress is that they put all their hope in one person. They put all their hope in one thing. And if that thing didn't work out, then their life is finished. They feel like whether their ministry or their calling or their business is finished because that thing did not work out. So child of God, let that not be your story. Make sure that you are opening up several channels, you know, that money can keep coming. And then another thing is important for you to know, which is the fourth thing, is always seek for creative ideas. Always seek for creative ideas. Don't forget, people will invest in your life if you are able to convince them that the product that you are selling to them is useful for them. For example, in the case of the one that is in the church, we are nothing but service provider. So you have to always ask God what is happening at the moment. You have to be at the cutting edge of things because you want to know what is happening at the moment what I'm telling my listeners, what I'm uh, serving those people that are coming to church, am I, is my service still well packaged enough that they can see the value that is in what I'm providing for them? Because if you take, for example, if somebody going to come to your church and you are a preacher, if you're going to come there and show up unprepared, think about it. Show up unprepared. Never think about what is happening around them. Never think about what, what type of people that are, have been coming to you. What do they need? What can help them? What are the kind of information? What are the kind of preaching? What are the kind of prayers? What are the kind of ministration you're going to give them this week that can help them to navigate through the week ahead of them? How do you expect them to come back? If your preaching is is not making impact in their life if you are a preacher or the product you are selling is not impacting their life or the services you are providing is not beneficiary for them they will not keep coming 
to use whatever you are offering. So it is important for you to know that as part of the packages of overcoming stress, you have to be a person that have a clear product that people are interested to invest in. And then the last thing I would like to talk about before we begin to conclude today is that it is so important for you to know that no matter how far your finances have gone or you have used your finances or you have invested your finances, just make sure that every money that comes into your hand is reinvested in a good way that it can bear multiple harvests. Do you hear what I say? Multiple harvests. In other words, don't just invest it in one place because if you are into business, for example, and I can speak this way because I was a S business person. If you are into business, for example, you have to understand that you cannot just put every of your product in one particular market. Uh, shop or one mar particular marketplace, you have to spread it. You know, you have to spread it across different sh uh, sh uh, um, um, shopping outlets, so to speak. You know, different places. You have to spread so that in case this place is not working today, the other place will be working. So you have different avenue where your product are being sold. That's the same thing in the ministry. If you are in the ministry, you cannot depend your income to only come through tithe and offering. Tithe and offering is one thing. But writing of books is another thing. Going out to minister in other ministries is another thing. To be able to also to create other products that you can sell, maybe teaching materials and et cetera, et cetera, is another thing. So you have to have multiple sources of income. For example, today I am ministering in the church regularly on weekends when I'm around, but at the same time I am having a royal a royalty through my books that I have written, which I'm still writing more. And I'm also a traveling minister. I'm traveling around the world to be a blessing to people. But at the same time, I even go to schools to teach. I go to different places. I'm, I have this open door that I even minister to the people in the authority. I minister to government people. I mentor people in different areas of life. And then I have different other programs that I'm running within the ministry of the ministry of the church. For example, the program like Prophetic School of Ministry. This is a school where people pay in to be part of that school. Of course, it's a ministry, but we call it Prophetic School of Ministry. And then we have the Joshua Empowerment that's strengthening leaders in their various areas and fields of calling. And then we have other programs that also I'm using as a platform of training people. And so you have to see, when you open up all these channels of different training and offering your services and your gift to people in different dimensions, you will see that every one of those channels, as people are being blessed, you too, you are being blessed back. And all these things help you to overcome financial stress because very often people just sit as Christian one place and they are just, you know, playing around with their fingers and saying, I'm expecting a miracle to happen. I'm expecting the wealth of the wicked to be laid on the feet of the righteous. I'm expecting God to do, to give me a miracle money and et cetera, et cetera. You know, and this can be a very good dream, but some of this dream might never come to pass because God says, are you about to hear what I'm saying? God says, I will bless the work of your hand. Hallelujah. I will bless the work of your hand. So in other words, whatever your hand find doing, God will bless it. So brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are hearing the, my voice from, I want you to know that God wants you to overcome financial stress by you keeping all these things. And then as I conclude, I want to just drop this last one that just came to my mind. Make sure that you are not greedy. 
Do you hear that? Because the whole concept about the love of money is talking about greediness. You know, the Bible says that the love of money is the beginning or the root of all evil. And for you to be able to overcome the love of money, you have to be somebody that is not greedy. So make sure that you are not greedy person because that way you will be able not to fall into the trap of the love of money and you will be able also not to fall into the trap of all kinds of evil and attack. So I want to encourage you, child of God, that even as we come your way next week, remember the reason why God has made you to be able to possess a property, to be able to be a landlord, to be able to own your own thing, is to have the ability to be stress-free and to be free from the stress of money because God wants you to peacefully be contented with what he has given to you and also be always aware where God is taking you to and don't let people be your standard of weighing yourself. Know who you are and know where you are in the kingdom and I tell you, you will be free from the stress of money. And until we come your way again next week, I want you to remember the hand of God is upon your life and as you continue to listen to this behind the scene, don't forget that God wants to bring you to the top because you are a victor and not a victim and you are above and not beneath and you are more than conquerors. And the same God that have done it for me, I'm sure he want to do it for you as you follow all these teachings and this mentorship and this training that we are bringing in this platform. So go ahead, like the brokers, give us a thumb up and let us hear from you how this brokers is blessing you. And you can also make a comment and share your own thought with us. Until we come your way again, we want you to know we love you, we love you, we love you. Shalom.